So I printed out uh, Pierce's new update on the extruder, the plastic on the hot end. Here are the old parts. And uh, I didn't have any real problem with it. The biggest problem I had was actually getting black PETG. I had to order from three different vendors off of eBay before uh, the first two vendors are doing clickbait. You order one thing and they send you some crap they know they can't get a giveaway and so they just tell you to keep it and refund your money. They're hoping most people won't complain, I guess. Anyway, finally got the PETG, never printed it with before. Took about four tries to get it to uh, stick to the bed. Ended up finally having to use glue stick. And that's with the bed running hot. And all well, all the presets are already set up by person. Their their files already were uh, downloaded for the PETG, so everything was already set up. And that was nice. You can see that one of the main differences is the angle of the fan. And there's a new uh, fan shroud thing there. I didn't have much hope for that as doing any good because part cooling from the uh, front with the old design was fine. It's the problem with the, with the cooling system on the uh, MK, well, all, I guess all of the Persa i3s, is there's no cooling from the rear. So any part design that has overhangs or a lot of details on the back opposite side from the fan suffer and it's visual so I didn't print the part th thing and this would help anything and it hasn't I've printed a lot with it since I put these parts on I printed it because uh, they were claiming the extra cooling by opening this whole side up over here let's see if we can find the old one see the old one was a uh, this would have been the front part there was a grate there was more enclosed so that's opened and they added a little slot here to try to suck more air through the venturi effect and um, they're claiming that would make the heat break cooler and it might help with jams and jams when printing with PLA is something that this machine has done since day one like you can maybe go a week without a problem then the next week you'll have a jam and a plug and you know it's just been really annoying MK2 never had a problem so it does have something to do with uh, how this was designed when I was putting it together though I did follow some advice that I saw on some other uh, YouTubes where they were saying check because there's a PTFD tube inside this design granted it doesn't go all the way down to the hot end but there's one in there and this one did have play and that's that's all put together by the factory I could lift it and lower it and it would raise and lower so I finally uh, some were suggesting you'd print a little little thing to slip into the the holder for the PEF tube whatever the thing is that grabs it the fitting and that would take care of it so I uh, didn't print out something I just wrapped some fine wire on that had pushed the tube all the way down pulled the little fitting piece up wrapped it and that did seem to take care of all of the the play in the tube so when I reassembled it I did that as well so I'm hoping that between the extra cooling and that tube being secured in place that that will uh, get rid of the dreaded uh, jams that you get when trying to print PLA. And so far, of course it's only been a week, but so far I haven't had any jams, so that's good. But anyway, I thought some of you might just want to see what the parts look like. And, is it, you know, once you get the PETG to stick to the build plate, it's an easy print. Of course, it's a, a major job putting those parts on your machine because just as the instruction assembly book says, this is the hardest part of the whole thing. So between teardown and reassembly, you know, expect to spend an hour or two getting everything re put together because you got to literally take everything apart. One interesting thing I saw inside the old parts, if we can get enough light in here to see it, see that red residue? That's where the Bontech gears sit, and uh, I don't know what that is. That's not filament, so maybe a rust or something. Anyway, it seems to be from the Bontech gear extruders, whatever that is. I'll have to keep an eye out. We'll see if it reoccurs. Maybe it was just something, because you can see the gears in here, something that just happened when it was initially made. I really don't know, but I've never... Uh, I've never printed a red filament like that, and the dust that comes off is very, uh, it's like, it's like rust or something almost, it's very strange. And 
As you can see, other than that, it pretty much looks the same. Of course, it would from the back because that part is the same. It's just your main housing in front. You do end up with this uh, old fan mount stick hanging out that no longer has any use because you now mount a new little piece right here for the fan to screw to. And by the way, it's easier to put that piece on before you have the extruder and everything else in place. It's easier to screw that on when it's out in the open. Maybe you could hang something off this. Maybe a little uh, LED light. You've got a hole. You could have a, an, a lead aiming down at the build surface or something. You should be able to use that for something. Or if not, you could cut it off. But in either case, it doesn't hurt anything. It's not in the way of anything. And uh, once I put all the parts back on there, I did run the full, just as if I just built the machine. You know, you take the plate off and go through the full alignment and let it do its 12-minute bed probing and all that. And then the, you do your lines again to make sure you actually got your Z offset set just right and all that good stuff. Went through the whole thing just in case anything, anything shifted a little. I didn't really expect anything to shift a little because I'm sure they worked from the same files and just modded them by opening it up and adding a slit but just because it had been a hundred percent apart I decided I'd go ahead and do that and it's been printing fine so any of you thinking about doing it you know why not you got nothing to lose it doesn't seem to uh, hurt the print quality and if it does help <clears throat> the jamming and cooling issues then great or if you'd been having cooling issues then who knows maybe that'll help too what will help the most is if someone comes up with a way to get that part cooling fan to go all the way around to the back somehow. Or at least further around, or three quarters of the way around, a little bit more. And I realize that uh, this is the only width you have. If you were going to put part cooling from the back, you'd almost have to route a tube straight back here. And then once the tube's out here, you could hook it to some sort of air source then you could get air from the back you know at that point it's easier just to put a fan probably out here on the back side of your machine to to blow air that way but anyway just thought some of you might want to see it if you had been thinking about doing it wanted to know what it really looked like wanted to know if it was hard I can't really tell you if it's worth it I can only tell you it doesn't hurt anything so if it does help it's worth it I guess anyway I'm gonna give it a shot